And in this particular video, we are going to simplify these rational expressions. So we have what we call in algebra a rational expression. Anytime you hear that word rational, you want to think of uh, fractions essentially. But we would not refer to these expressions as regular fractions because they have variables. And there's kind of more of a technical definition of a rational expression. But for those of you out there that are studying algebra, like algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, certainly pre-calculus, you're going to have to be able to handle problems like this. So this is definitely an algebra must know. And what we want to do here is simplify this expression, i.e. we want to go ahead and work with these rational expressions and make this expression as simple as possible. Matter of fact, the final answer is actually quite simple. And if you can do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then we're going to go through multiple steps to simplify this rational expression. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. So let's go ahead and get into this problem. Okay, so I'm going to cover quite a few steps here. Um, I would say on the scale of 1 to 10, 10 being a very difficult problem, 1 being a kind of real easy problem, nah, this might be like a level 5, so like a medium level type of problem. But before we get into what we need to do here, let's just talk about some of the kind of main ideas to solve this problem or to simplify this rational expression. So the first is you absolutely need to know how to factor Okay, so if you, and if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you should have factoring skills. If you do not, you literally will not be able to pass algebra. Okay, so factoring skills are extremely important. So that's basically kind of a clue on what to do, right? We're going to have to have factor all this stuff out. And once we have everything completely factored, well, then we need to look for opportunities to cross cancel. So let's take a look at an easy example before we get into this problem. So let's suppose I have this as our problem, and I said simplify this rational expression. Okay, so I have x plus 2 over 4x plus 8. Well, what I want to do is factor. Well, I can't really factor uh, the numerator, but I could certainly factor out the greatest common factor um, in the denominator. So I can factor out a 4, so that leaves me with x plus 2. Okay, now just... To double check this, we can multiply that 4 back in. So 4 times x is 4x, and then 4 times 2 is 8. So uh, we have 4x plus 8 factored as 4 times x plus 2. Now here, in the numerator, just because this doesn't have parentheses or grouping symbols around it, there is always, you can always throw in uh, grouping symbols or parentheses around any sum or difference. In other words, if you have a plus b over c, I could write this as a plus b over c, or I could put some parentheses around it. It's a kind of always a good idea to get used to putting in parentheses even when they're not there. Okay, oftentimes in mathematics and algebra, you're not going to see parentheses around um, uh, sums and differences, but you should get in the habit of doing that because it uh, definitely can confuse a lot of students. So at this point, I, fact, I did my factoring, and I'm like, okay, I have x plus 2 over here, x plus 2 down here, but to be very explicit about that, we'll put some parentheses around it. So these are like factors. So at this point, I can factor out this factor against that factor, and this leaves uh, just a 1 fourth. Now up here in the numerator, you might be saying, well, I don't see a 1. Well, 1 is always a factor, okay? So 1 fourth is what remains, and there you go. This is no different than simplifying a uh, fraction. Now, when you're dealing with numbers, we would call this a fraction. When we're dealing with variables, we call this a rational expression. But here I can simply factor 1 times 10, and this would be 3 times 10, okay? So I can cross-cancel those like, like factors, and I'm left with 1 third. Same idea applies, but what you need to know how to do is factor. That is the key. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Uh, we are talking about um, things that you need to master, like at the algebra one level. Okay, so if you're in pre-algebra, you might kind of uh, start, you're definitely going to start learning this, but you really don't learn this kind of full on until you get into algebra one. Certainly at the algebra two level, you should be really good at factoring. If you need help with any of this stuff that I'm going to be covering, if I'm going too fast, 
check out either my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses uh, that will teach you everything you need to know. All right, so here's the deal. I got my rational expressions. I'm going to take a look at each one of the parts here, each of these numerators and denominators, and I'm going to completely fully factor, and then we'll uh, talk about how we'll put this all together at the very end. All right, so here I have x squared minus y squared. My eyes are kind of like drawn to this, and we're just going to take it one component at a time. So how do we factor x squared uh, minus y squared? Well, this is factorable, just like a number, like let's say 10. Can I factor 10? Sure I can, that's two times five. Can I factor seven? Well, seven is a prime number, that's one times seven. So uh, there are prime um, polynomials and prime um, things in algebra. In other words, not every single thing that you encounter uh, you will be able to factor. So you need to attempt to factor, but if you can't factor it, well, then you just got to leave it the way it is. But here, this expression, x squared minus y squared, can definitely be factored. What you need to know is this pattern right here. This is called the difference of two squares. The difference of two squares rule. It's a special factoring rule. So uh, basically the pattern is this. Uh, the difference of two squares, right? Here is a square and here's another square. We're finding the difference, a squared minus b squared. This is such a common special rule that you, you really need to know uh, this rule. It's, it's, it's all over the place in algebra, okay? So if you um, are struggling with factoring, this is something you definitely need to master. But anyways, uh, a squared minus b squared, if we have this pattern, we just follow this rule, a plus b times a minus b. So you can see here, um, x squared minus y squared, well, the x is acting as the a squared minus, and the y is acting as the b squared. So um, in this case, x is a and y is b. And I'm going kind of quick, uh, quickly here because I won't be able to fully teach all the factoring skills. I'm kind of covering them pretty quickly because I want to focus in on the simplification of uh, this rational expression. But again, make some mental notes if you're confused on this then you need to definitely brush up on your factoring. Okay, so let's kind of erase this. Bottom line is that x squared minus y squared is going to be equal to x plus y times x minus y. Again, we're following this pattern. We're following the difference of two squares. All right, so hopefully you understand that. And if you do, well, that's excellent. So this numerator up here, x squared minus y squared, when we have it fully factored, we can put in an x plus y times x minus y over 12. So now let's go ahead and focus on the rest of this right here. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna take it one thing at a time. And at this point, let's go ahead and talk about how to factor this. This is super easy. Now, here we have at y squared and x squared. It, this looks very similar to the difference of two squared, right, when we had x squared minus y squared, but this is a sum. Okay, so this is a completely different ball game. We can't factor, we can only factor a difference of two squares. When we, ha when we have a sum like this, we don't have a special factoring rule. But what we can do is factor out the greatest common factor of three. Okay, so we're gonna factor out that GCF. So now we have three times y squared plus x squared. And you can see here, I did some work. I'm like, what, did, what happened here? Well, this y squared, I'm sorry, y to the fourth minus x to the fourth, this is actually a difference of two squared situation. This is the same thing as a squared squared minus b squared squared, okay? So this is a difference of two squares. So you're gonna have to just kind of do a little bit of uh, algebra trickery to figure this out. But again, these are kind of common situations. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look and how we were able to factor that denominator. So uh, y to the fourth minus x to the fourth. Again, just you're, you might be saying to yourself, well, that's to the fourth power. It's not to the second power, so I can't do anything. Again, you absolutely can. You just gotta you know, practice these skills uh, as you are learning all these factoring uh, rules, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so if we kind of match up uh, a squared minus b squared, we can write uh, y to the fourth as y squared squared, okay, because this is going to be y to the fourth, and x to the fourth, we can write that as x squared squared. So this y squared is acting as my a, okay, 
and this is acting as my B. Again, we're going to follow this pattern. So this is how we can construct um, uh, y squared plus x squared times y squared minus x squared. So if you need to pause the video and just kind of focus on how this um, is kind of coming together, that's perfectly fine. But more importantly, what you should be doing is making yourself a little list like, oh, I don't really get this or, you know, I need to work on that. And if you kind of understand, if you're like, yeah, I think I get what's going on. If you understand my explanation, that's one thing, okay? But you need to be able to do these problems on your own. That's how you're going to be successful on your quizzes, tests, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so at this point, we are almost fully factored. Uh, this right here, we're going to talk about in just a second, okay? This y squared minus x squared. If some of you are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you can factor this as well. Well, I know that, of course, but uh, we'll address this in just one second. So we got some pretty good... Uh, factoring going on. Let's clean this up and do some cross canceling. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so here is our um, problem at this stage of the game, and we have some nice candidates here to cross cancel. So let's go ahead and just identify what we can do here. So here I have y squared plus x squared. Well, I have a y squared plus x squared here. So these are like factors. So I can cross cancel. These go away. I have a 12 here. And a 3 here, so 3 goes into 12, that's 4. You can think of this 12 as 4 times 3, of course. You can cross-cancel those 3s. And then here, what's going to remain is this x plus y over, uh, or x plus y times x minus y. And we'll have this y squared minus x squared. And then we'll have a 4 remaining. Okay, so let's go ahead, just clean this up so we can see what we have right now. Okay, so after all this good cross canceling, we're at this stage of the game. And some of you might say, well, are we done? Isn't the problem done? Well, not quite, okay? Oftentimes when you factor, you can factor the factors. You just need to keep factoring until you can't factor anymore. So some of you might be saying, well, if I factor this, y squared minus x squared, I'm gonna end up with a y plus x times y minus x. And here we have x plus y's. And this is like not exactly what you want. Well, there is a little trick here that we can do to address this situation. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so anytime you have, you want to reverse the order of your variables here, you can always factor out a negative one. Okay, so here we have four times y squared minus four x. If I distribute this four in, I'm going to have 4y squared minus 4x squared, right? So this is what this is equal to. But how can I kind of uh, have the same situation but kind of reverse the order? Well, I can factor out a negative 1. So in other words, I can make this a negative 4, and then I can reverse my x and y right here. Okay, this is kind of confusing, but I have an x, x and y, x and y, I want to have x and y down in the denominator, not y and x. I, don't, I want to have a y squared minus x squared. I want to switch this around. So I can uh, factor out a negative 4, a negative 1, actually, what makes this a negative 4. And let's just double check that this is OK to do. So if I multiply this negative 4 back in, I'm going to get a negative 4x squared. OK, but this is what I have right here, right? A negative 4x squared. And then this negative 4 times this negative y squared, well, negative times a negative, is positive. So this would be a positive y squared, and that's what I have right here. So this would be a negative 4x plus, y, uh, plus a positive 4y squared. It is the same thing. So I didn't break the problem. I'm just using a little math trick here to rewrite this. So again, these little tricks, these little techniques are things that should go into your math toolbox, okay? All these uh, factoring skills, and you know, this is what your math teacher wants to see in you. You're like, oh yeah, you know how to handle this situation. All right, so now by doing this, by having this as a negative four, not a four, I can uh, reverse the order of these variables. So here I have a lovely x squared minus y squared. Well, this is again, a difference of two square situation. So I can easily factor this. So let's go ahead and factor that right now. Okay, so here I have x plus y times x minus y, negative 4, and then our, um, let me kind of just make sure you remember, we had an x squared 
minus y squared there. That factors x plus y times x minus y, just to be clear about that. So that's going to be in the denominator here. So now take a look at what we have. I mean, this factor will cross cancel with that factor. This one will cross cancel with that one. So this is just going to work out very lovely for us. So all these factors cross cancel. Now, again, some of you might be saying, well, there's nothing in the numerator. Well, there's always one. So after you cross cancel all your factors, there's nothing remaining. Well, there's always a one. So this is one over negative four. And some of you might be questioning, why is it written this way? Well, here, if you have one over negative four, that's the same thing as negative one fourth. And that's even the same thing as negative uh, one over four. Okay, it doesn't make a difference. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. Doesn't make a difference. Stylistically, though, you don't want to leave your negative sign. Even though it's associated with this negative four, the whole value is negative. So it's just kind of best to write it this as a negative value. Put that negative sign right here. But if you turned in any one of these answers to any math teacher that I know, they would still give you a lovely A plus and a 100%. But little details because this is a question that does come up from time to time. Okay, so again, we kind of started from the very beginning. We talked about what we needed to know. You have to have these factoring skills. If you cannot factor, you cannot really continue on in algebra. It is a critical skill and it's one that you need to practice okay there's all these little techniques that you need to know and the more uh, practice you do with factoring the better off you're going to be in algebra and you know even more advanced mathematics like pre-calculus so again if you need help with any of this stuff um, check out my algebra one or algebra two course but if this video helped you out don't forget to like and subscribe and with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day